And so I scraped all the plastic gauge off of the crank and the caps. And I'm gonna put it together with assembly lube for a final. Okay, so I got my new OEM thrust washers. Um, there's a side with grooves and a side without grooves. They go, the grooves are gonna face outboard of the um, of the cradle on the number four so I'm gonna take some assembly lube Okay, so I got the crank in. Um, that's really all I can do right now because of the chamfer I have on here, or the, the lack of chamfer. So I'm waiting for my solid piston ring compressor to come in the mail so that way I can install the pistons and rods. Double check that with plastic gauge, make sure everything is good with that. Then. I'll be putting on all of the accessories, water pump, timing belt, um, LSV tech conversion kit, uh, then it's on to the head. And one thing I didn't show is the torque on these are stepped. So the first step is 22 foot pounds and then the second step is 56. So don't go straight to 56, uh, it is stepped. and check to make sure that your crank spins freely and we're all good okay so uh, I've got everything out to uh, start assembling do this one at a time I'll make sure I don't mix anything up especially the caps um, they're all machined with each other so it's very important that you don't mix those up um, I am using OEM Honda bearings um, they do come in different sizes and I came up with my sizes 
Uh, I'm going to explain this. So, I measured the inside diameter of the rod with my bore gauge. And I also measured the outside diameter of the crankshaft journal. So, what I got from those, um, this is 1.89 inch. And the number one journal is 1.7708 inch. And I came up with that. I need a red bearing. And I'm going to show you that here. So 1.89, which is the inside diameter of the rod. Subtract 1.7708, which is the outside diameter of the crankshaft journal. And then red bearing is 0 0.0586 to 0 0.0587 so for the lower side we're going to subtract 2 times 0 0.0586 and it's 2 times because there's 2 bearing halves and that's uh, 2 thousandths So then for the upper side, I'm going to do the same thing, 1.89 minus 1.7708, and it's 0 0.0587, so subtract 2 times 0 0.0587, so our clearance should be 18, 18 ten thousandths to two thousandths or twenty ten thousandths. I'm going to snap my bearings in. I'm going to put a little bit of assembly lube on the inside diameter of the piston where the wrist pin goes also on the wrist pin and on the inside diameter on the rod where the wrist pin goes small end if you want to get technical so I've got the piston onto the rod with the wrist pin um, where is it? So that tang is towards the exhaust side, and then on the piston, the deeper the deeper grooves for the valve relief is for the intake. So uh, they are opposite. Okay, so I got my piston installed on the rod. Um, snap rings are in both sides. They are a pain in the ass. Um, deeper valve reliefs on the intake side. And the tang is on the exhaust side. Uh, top compression ring gap towards the exhaust. Second compression ring gap towards the intake. Oil control gap is there. Um, you can see the bottom rail for the oil control is there. And on the other side the gap for the top top rail on the oil control so I got my piston um, in the rod ready to go in I'm using a solid compressor sleeve um, since I had the machine shop not put any type of bevel on my cylinder wall so we gotta use this one Okay. Just gonna wipe off the rod journal to make sure there's nothing on there that's going to affect my measurement.
Just got my little piece of green plastic gauge. Uh, now my cap with the tang to the exhaust side matching the tang on the other part of the rod. Put that in. And using the ARP Molly that comes with it. Spread that on the threads. My torque wrench set to 46 foot pounds. Just the spec that Skunk 2 gave me with the rods. All right, so I've got my last uh, piston and rod assembly ready to go I've in. I've got my solid ring compressor sleeve ready to go, lined up. Everything's oiled and lubed up. Uh, intake side, here we go. it. Got my little piece of plastic gauge on there. Push the rod up the rest of the way. Got my cap. Um, tang for the bearing. Tang for the bearing. Obviously they match up. Got my torque wrench set to 46 foot pounds. Now, obviously, if I try to torque it this way, the crank is going to turn and smear the plastic gauge. So, I'm going to try to keep the torque wrench pushing on this axis so that way I don't turn the crank and I won't be able to read the plastic gauge.
after the bolts are fully threaded out, I'm just going to lightly tap it with the hammer and that will separate the rod from the cap. And now, I can, now I can read my plastic gauge. So reading this plastic gauge, it's in between one thousandth and fifteen ten thousandths. So, you know, that would be, go, I was going for twelve to fourteen ten thousandths. So that's probably right about there. So I scra uh, scraped off all the plastic gauge, clean everything up. Now I've got it all lubed up. And pull it back up into place. Match the tang with the tang. And torque it down for the final. Got my pulley bolt in temporarily just to check, make sure that everything spins freely. So here it is, all four are in. Um, so the bottom end. In terms of the rotating assembly is complete. Cranks in and torqued. Clearance is checked. All four rods and pistons are in torqued. Clearance is checked. Everything's checked out. So uh, the next step for me would be the oil pump, rear main seal, baffle plate, and uh, we'll cover it up and we can move on to the head.